Hi everyone, it's Mary Beth, and I'm going to take you through the life of a selection or an item in Materio, and I want to go through what it looks like to go all the way through the process with one item and what you can do in Materio. And this is just going to showcase for you how the system works and how you can um, use um, Materio to get approval on selections and keep organized and track shipments and all of that. So we're going to dive in. All right, for this example, I'm going to go through um, a flooring item. So first things first, I'm going to put the location that it's in. We're going to say that this one is in the primary bath. And for this example, I'm actually going to use um, floor tile. So you could also, of course, group this into uh, the tile category, but for now, I'm going to do this. So I've added an item in material. Now, this is a custom item. This wasn't added through the scope starter. So I'm going to enable the selection. And this means that my client needs to make a decision on this item. So next, what I'm going to do is click the quantity and mark the plans. And I'm actually going to use the polygon tool for this one because we are marking off um, a little bit of an odd shape here. So you'll see that I am going over here on the primary bath and I am marking off the area in which I want this floor tile. And you'll see that it calculates it to be 109 square feet. So the next thing you're want, going to want to do on this item is add some waste and then save it. And now you'll see that I have an estimated quantity and then I have a marker over here representing the tile. So not only has it created a place for me to put the, um, the takeoff information, but this is also where I can come in and write things like inspiration description, so we may say black and white um, graphic tile, and that may be just like the inspiration or what we want to source for this project. And then I can also go ahead and estimate the cost here. So I'm going to say it's $20 a square foot. I'm going to put in estimated shipping here. Um, if I am buying this uh, retail, I would be putting in a vendor tax, but because I'm going to be buying this wholesale and putting a markup, I'm going to go ahead and put my 40% markup and then my client facing tax for where my product is located. So I'm going to save that. And just a reminder that you can just click this price right here and edit all of this information. It's also going to tell you what you put um, historically for the same item. So I am going to now see that I have a floor tile. It is estimated at 3,500 square feet, um, I mean at $3,500 to do 120 square feet in this bathroom. Now the cool thing is that is a really accurate estimate moving forward on your project that has your markup baked in, it has your tax baked in. And this allows your client to get a really good picture of what their project is going to cost. So just so you know, the shipping is baked into the price that the client sees. They won't see that broken down, but any sales tax or what we call client tax will be at the bottom of your project. All right, so now it's time for me to make a selection. I'm going to go over to the selections tab and you'll see that since I created that scope item, my checklist of what's needed to be decided is already here. So I have floor tile in a primary bathroom. I can see my quantity as well as my price. So now I'm going to show you how to pull in an option from your library and then also how you can pull one in from our product clipper. So first I'm going to go pick from library and here it's going to open me uh, up in the category that I'm under. So if I were under tile, it would open me up in tile. This one is floral flooring and I actually um, have some floor tile here. So I'm going to go ahead and add in, let's see, I will add in two of these options that are kind of graphic tiles that I already had in my library and that may be because I work with that vendor often or maybe something I found and I wanted to use on a project eventually if I found the right client. So I've added that in and now I'm going to go and clip a product um, from somewhere else and add it to this. All right, now I am at tile bar and I'm going to source this product. So I'm going to click on the Materio logo at the top. I'm going to click uh, this is flooring and then I'm going to do tile floor. And then here you'll see that it already already pulls in the name and the SKU. Um, here it's pulling in the dimensions right here. So I'll probably just copy that and move it right here. And this is tilebar.com. And then you can always uh, keep the description that was provided. You could also um, remove this because it can get really long sometimes. Just depends on what you want your client to see. Um, and then it's gonna pull the website. It's also gonna pull the price. So this is pulling the price per box. Um, I'm gonna change this to be the price per square foot because that's how I estimated it. I'm gonna put in my sales tax 
and my markup on this item. And then I'm also gonna put in the lead time. You can do days or weeks. So I'm gonna save that to my library. Now it's saved. I'm gonna hop back over to my project. All right, so I'm back on my project and you'll notice that I can go in and I can now pull from my library. It's gonna tell me that I have a new item right here and I'm going to put it in. So I can always come in and edit this information on an item. This is where I could come in and I could attach specification sheets or tear sheets. I could come in and adjust um, client tax or vendor tax. Um, and then I could um, see that the price that's going to be visible to my client. And I can get a good breakdown of what's going on. This is also where I can come in and say that it is sold by the box. And if I wanted to, I could replace this number with uh, the box price. and I can apply those changes to the library. All right, so now I have all of my tile options here, and this is the cool part where you get to send it off to your client. You'll notice that when I have something that has any option on it, it becomes ready to send to my client. You'll also uh, should be aware that anything in the open section under this open tab that you're adding options to is not visible by your client. And that's simply so that they're not coming in and messing with um, the things that you're sourcing or working on, and rather you can kind of send it to them or publish it to them when you feel like it's ready for them to see. So I'm going to go ahead and send, and you can filter by location when you're sending your selections, but for this one, we only have one location. So I'm going to go ahead and check my client and send that selection over for approval. You'll notice that when I do that, it's gone from this uh, tab and it's now moved to awaiting approval. So this is similar to what my client is going to see. They're going to see a very uh, similar interface and when they're taken to their project, they're going to be able to um, look at these selections and open them up. Now, of course, you can turn off vendor information and things like that. You can also turn off pricing. So they may, they're not going to see, you know, this specific of a view, but they will be able to click in, look at the photos, um, you know, go through each option. They can come in and communicate with you and uh, discuss this option with you and give you feedback. Um, and then, of course, they can come in and approve it. So let's say that they're going to approve this selection. It's also going to let them know that they're exceeding their initial budget if you've shown them the financial part. And now you'll notice that it's moved to confirm. So my my item has gone from an estimated scope of work um, where I know that I need something on the project through having an actual product that is there, um, that this one, for example, has gone over the price. So my client has agreed to go over the price and um, it is now confirmed. And that means that it is ready for the next phase, and that is um, ordering. So go over to my purchase orders tab. You'll notice that I actually have one item, which is this item with a missing vendor. So I'm going to go back to my confirmed. I'm going to click, and now I can revise it. You don't need to reopen the selection to edit it. You simply hit revise. It's going to give you this warning because it's saying, hey, your client has approved this. Um, and this is where you can come in. You could get rid of photos. You could um, come in and add the vendor here. and I'm gonna save. And I'm gonna apply those changes to the library so that in the future, if I wanna use this item again, it does have um, the vendor on it. So now if I go to purchase orders, you'll see that I have tilebar.com with one approved item. And here's where I can come in and record an order that I already placed or go through the purchase order workflow of sending it to a vendor. I'm gonna record an order that I already placed and I'm gonna upload the receipt for how much I actually spent on this item. And then I'm gonna change this to what I spent and I'm going to put in the estimated ship date and I'm going to save it and now you'll see that it's over in the paid status my invoice is attached if I want to view it it tells me when it's going to ship and then if I go over to the confirm section you'll see that the status has automatically been updated to ordered so now I can come in and click ordered and then let's say it's a week later, it has shipped. I can come in and say, great, it is with this tracking number, with this carrier. I can put any notes if I want to. And then I can also schedule the arrival of this item on my timeline. Now you'll see that the status has been changed to shipped. So again, my item is, is growing and living throughout the entire process of my project. And if I hop over to my timeline, you'll see that the delivery is expected um, on this date. I can also reschedule it. I could come in and change the date and put a note. I can also see the history of this item from this location so I can see um, full history of, of the options that were approved or if things were changed. Um, and so that is how an item can go from 
you know, confirmed to purchased. Now let's say that I've actually received this item. I might want to say that it's at the receiver and then um, it's going to have that update. The other cool thing about Material is that this confirmed workspace has a lot of notes on it that are visible to your client. So they can see the status of these items. So rather than um, coming in or emailing you and calling you and asking you where things are, they can actually come to Material and get a really clear picture of what's going on on the project and the things that they care the most about, which are, are uh, you know, mostly their finishes. So I'm going to say that this is received and now I'm going to say that it's in progress. I can say that it's, um, install happening 11 16 or something like that or over the course of certain days and again this is just going to allow them to have that peace of mind if they do decide to come into the system it's also going to keep your team up to date on where this item is now i can come in and say that this is complete um, and usually this is going to be done hopefully in the field by one of the construction team members or um, one of your team members if they're just doing an installation um, and they can put um, install date and then also, you know, their initial. And this can be done from the mobile app as well. But that way it, um, it is noted as complete. You'll also notice that if I go back to my scope of work that this status is here. I can also change the status from this panel and I can also click the shipping link um, from this panel to kind of get an idea of where it's at. So if I'm the one responsible for tracking down all these packages, this is a great way to easily access that information. And again, you can always access the information by hovering over the item on the floor plan. So that not only makes it really clear where this item's going for you and your team, but also for any contractors you might be sharing this with. So the last thing, of course, that you want to do, and usually you would actually do this in between the probably the process of getting something ordered and actually or getting it approved and getting it ordered is actually collecting payment on it. So I can go to some new invoice. My client is going to be populated here and I can um, bill for items. I'm going to do approved items and I'm going to bill for this tile. So you'll notice that this tile is populated. Um, and that it is added right here. And I can go ahead and send that invoice over to my clients. I can either request payment in full or deposit, and I can also select the payment date. Um, and I can send that over, and they have the ability to pay um, using Materio um, via uh, Stripe. They can use ACH or credit card payment. Of course, they can always write you a check. Um, and you can also check out our QuickBooks integration, and you can move it over to QuickBooks if you'd like to get payment through QuickBooks. So that is how um, an item is marked as sent and then i'm just for the sake of this going to enter this payment manually and now you'll see that it's paid so if i go over to my selections workspace you'll see that this item is um, paid right here um, and so that lets you know that it is paid you can also link to the invoice from here of where that item was paid for um, so i hope it's really helpful to see kind of the full picture of an item from estimation um, or you know proposal phase all the way through invoiced and paid um, we've tried to make this as easy as we can um, and one thing I guess I should highlight before I before I hop off is that you can also export the selection for your contractor. So what I'd want to do is click export, print selections. And it's actually going to print it like this. It's going to say when it was generated, uh, information about the item, square footage, location, etc. So this is another way to hand off selections to your tile installer or your contractor and this is just another way that material can help connect the pieces so i hope that um, this is helpful to understand a little bit more how items work of course if you have any specific questions you can always reach out to us at hello at material.co or chat us from your project dashboard